Today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at the McFarlane Toys, McFarlane Monsters, Series 3, The Six Faces of Madness. This is Elizabeth Bathory. The Blood Queen of Hungary, who struck terror throughout the region in the late 1500s and early 1600s and said to have killed more than 600 young women. A member of the ruling class, Bathory tortured servants throughout her life. Later, with concern of her fading beauty, she began bathing in the blood of the slaughtered young girls as a perverse form of the Fountain of Youth. The third series in the McFarlane Monster Earth action figure line focuses on the past, a historical look back at some of the human race's most notorious blood letters and miscreants, incredibly detailed and fully accessorized. So let's figure out how big Elizabeth Bathory is. This is one of those rare instances in which you have a figure that's essentially laying down or in a position in which the figure is not going to be very tall, but more longer. So we'll measure it from the front or the top of the bathtub all the way down to the bottom. And that gives us at around, it gives us at around six, I'm going to say 6.6 .6 inches in length. And that works out to be centimeter wise, flip that over, 16.8 centimeters. Her accessories are as gruesome as the figure itself, one of which the tallest of the three she comes with. I don't know if this would be constituted as a candelabra or just a candle stand, but she has a three candle stand, each of which is adorned and adorned, probably not being the greatest of words, with the heads of three of her servants. What's so terrifying about this, and maybe not to this extent, is that, of course, this line of figures are all based on real-life monsters. To think that this would certainly have been a case, maybe not to the point where she would have made candles out of all three of her servants, but to think that there would have been monsters out there that would have done terrifying, gruesome things such as this. Each of the heads are very, very distinctly different from one another. They have a slightly off pale color as they should. The hands, heads are not removable. I wouldn't take the time to try to take those off. The candle itself or the stand itself is comprised of two different colors. It kind of looks like a, a bronze color and there might be then a gold color. Now, I'm wondering, though, if that coloring here is more from the blood that's been trickling down from the heads. As you can see, there's a little bit of where that blood, possibly blood, is a different discoloration than from the regular gold color that makes up the base. Just a gruesome, gruesome sight. It does stand, but it doesn't have the greatest, you know, footing to it that as a result you just have to be careful that it doesn't tip for you if you put it down and you just kind of leave it alone it should be perfectly fine and certainly the last thing you would want to do is for this to topple over and one of these heads go rolling uh, then of course just quickly looking at the candles on each one of the tops of their heads very gruesome put that right over there the other two accessories that she comes included with are ones that she's going to be holding. So I guess why don't we go look first at the figure and then we'll add the other two accessories, the crucial accessories, if you will, to complete Elizabeth Bathory. Now here we have Elizabeth sitting inside of her bathtub and it's not quite filled with water. No, in fact, quite the opposite. It's filled with blood. I don't know if the blood has started to cure or, or curdle if you will as it started to kind of congeal in the bathtub I don't know if that's supposed to be like that but it definitely looks like it's thick thick blood 
I'm quite impressed with the amount of detail that they put into the bathtub itself. Just immaculate between what looks to be like flying, I don't know if those are mermaids or, I don't know, they could be uh, sirens. And then we've got horses on the side there. They're all sort of demonic versions of themselves. Like this looks like a horse, but then it's got a tail almost like a serpent. We spin that around and there's the front. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be taken as a, an image of Bathory herself, but you can see the back of her head is of a, of a man's head. And then we've got a little human skull up at the top there, some wings from there. This neat looking octopus that's running its tentacles right across pretty much the length of this one side. Also, we've got what looks to be a dragon on the back there. Just levels and levels of care and detail that they've sculpted into this bathtub. And that's not even just looking at the figure. It's interesting as well that it's, there's peg holes on the undersides. I don't know why they would have done that. I mean, it's got four legs and it would have stood per perfectly fine on its own. I don't know why there would have been the need to add peg holes. The figure also doesn't come with pegs or a, a stand. So again, I just don't understand why they would have included peg holes on the undersides of, the, of the, the bathtub feet, which I might also add is a slightly different color than the gold that makes up the sculpture on the side of the bathtub. It's, it's just so impressive to look at. Then we've got Elizabeth inside, like I said, the bathtub full of blood. There is her head sculpt. There we go right there. A very beautiful looking character. It's just a shame that she loves to bathe in the blood of her servants. As you can see that she has one foot sticking out. The foot is dripping blood. And I really like this effect. You can see there's one drop of blood and a previously dripped blood droplets, if you will, has splashed up from the pool of blood in her bathtub. I don't know if she has gotten in the bathtub and then has left, or simply the blood has just dripped off the edge. You can see the outer area, the outer area of the bathtub is also soaked and covered in this crimson red. So she does come with two other accessories. I had mentioned that at the beginning of this review, one of which being a knife. You can see that it's got blood on it, but it doesn't look it's like it's fresh blood, likely something that has dried. And uh, there's this little opening there in her hand. You just want to take the knife very carefully and just slide it into place. Luckily, there's no resistance. The gripping of the hand is wide enough that you can just easily slide the blade in place. You don't even have to really worry about forcing it in between the figures, the fingers of Elizabeth, it just simply slides right into place. The other accessory that she comes included with is a goblet or a wine glass, if you will. And it's got this neat blood splattering, kind of splashing effect that has been added. And that other accessory fits right into her hand. Now, I know what you're thinking. Am I gonna have to pry the fingers apart? No, you actually don't have to worry about that. Just kind of put it in on an angle like that, and then just bring it down. Now, if you want to work properly with gravity, you may want to bring that down like this, because of course she's going to, it's going to be pouring down this way. And there you've got yourself the completed figure. It's not so much a figure as it is more so a statue. There's really very little that you can do to it. Um, you can't, I guess you could rotate the foot, but not really a whole lot. I mean, it doesn't throw off the sculpt for you to be able to rotate the foot. I guess you may want to bring it around so that at the very least the drips line up with the splashes of the, uh, the, the pool of blood there. You can see that she's got blood there on her feet. Very little blood here on her legs. Maybe she hasn't had her legs submerged in the blood for a while. Some blood there on the sides of her legs and down by the calf area. Everything is sort of concealed, so there's nothing really showing here on the figure. Even like her chest, there's nothing really... Everything is hidden, so you're not seeing anything. Um, again, a really beautiful head sculpt. It's just such a shame that it's attached to such a horrific monster like Elizabeth Bathory. The rest of her posability, like I said, there's really not much to be had. 
she doesn't she moves her hand I guess you could I guess you could drip the, the hand down like this as another option as well I mean in the picture she's got the the goblet up here like she's got her arm let me just rotate it back up here she's got it like this in the picture or at the back of the packaging but I guess in theory you could rotate the arm this way as well it doesn't disjoint necessarily the arm and it does still play into the fact that the blood is pouring out of the glass which would be just as effective doing it this way as it would be doing it facing inward there um, she does also have head pose ability but it doesn't really move that much not enough to really change the look of the figure so it's really pretty much just like head arms and her foot and not really this hand but so basically foot arm and her head just ever so slightly this is one of those instances of a McFarlane toy where it's basically more show than it is something that you can pose what you're getting for this figure is not just something that you're going to go in drastically pose in different positions instead you're going to just marvel in the fact one of which being that they put so much detail into it and for the fact that McFarlane would have created a figure based on such a hor horrific historical character. One ongoing staple seems to be for spooky spots is I always look at one McFarlane line. Every single year I think I've done that and probably every single year I'll continue to do that until I run out of lines to choose from. And that's because McFarlane back in the day, it's not something he would do nowadays, but certainly back then, McFarlane produced a lot of horrific characters. Characters based on fairy tales, based on nursery rhymes, even based on holidays. And then we had this line right here that were based on real life monsters. Horrific people that did horrific things and McFarlane decided to make figures out of them. I started with Elizabeth Bathory because she's an interesting looking, I wanna say quote, figure. Nothing really about her screams figure. The only thing screaming would have likely been the servants before she adorned her candle posts there with their heads. But this figure is sort of, again, one of those show figures, sort of like the tortured souls that we've had a look at in the past as well. Some of those look just as more statue pieces, as something that you can pick up and move around. Bathory's got a few posable points to her, her leg, her arm, and her head, but really not enough to do anything with. The only thing that you could drastically change differently to her is to move her arm out, depending on where you want to splash the goblet of the blood. A really nice piece that is nice for all the right reasons, even though it's a wrong figure to be saying that. It's a beautiful looking figure, just again based on such a gruesome character that makes up one of mankind's historical moments. Speaking of historical moments, one thing I also really like about going with McFarlane's stuff for every single year is that it's sort of a time capsule. These figures are something that I don't think would pass nowadays. I don't think many stores would be stocking. I don't think you could go to a Toys R Us, let's just say, and be able to pick up an Elizabeth Bathory nowadays. But back in the day, this was common practice. You could go into a Toys R Us or any store that sold toys, and you'd be able to find this just readily available. In fact, I remember these figures just readily available sitting next to the pegs with the likes of G.I. Joe and Pokemon. That's pretty bad. And yet, sure enough, that stuff back in the day was passable. Maybe not so much now. So these figures really encompass the idea of the action figure time capsule. Figures that really have left some mark in the collecting world. Or sometimes a lot of times these lines just get forgotten by collectors and it's my due diligence to just remind people of some of the stuff that McFarlane used to produce kind of wish he could have produced nowadays but I don't think stuff like this would pass nowadays just the way the world has changed so drastically today's spookerific review we were having a look at the McFarlane toys this was the McFarlane Monsters Series 3 the six faces of madness and this was a very unclean unless you want to bathe yourself with blood this was elizabeth bathory we're going to be of course having a look at the rest of the six faces of madness over the course of spottober so certainly stay tuned for that if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other mcfarlane lines like i said every single year between christmas and of course the Halloween season, I try to cover off some McFarlane lines. So if you didn't already know, I've covered off and looked at both Tortured Souls line, uh, the Twisted Fairy Tales, the Twisted Christmas, 
And uh, there's a few others that I've also had a look at as well. The Wizard of Oz did the Twisted Land of Oz as well. And uh, we're going to have a couple more of these lines lined up for this year. I'm actually thinking about doing two lines this year rather than the traditional one line of McFarlane toys that I normally do. So I've just kind of given you a little more reasoning, hopefully, to watch these videos over the month of Spotober. Like I said, more spooky videos will be coming your way. I'm going to sprinkle them amongst regular reviews. So don't worry if you feel like you're not getting enough fix of horror. There's going to be a lot of horror stuff happening over the month of Spotober. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do, and I'll see you next time.